Hi guys, welcome to the Catan. Today, our topic of discussion is general anesthesia. Before going to the topic, at first we have to know from where and why the concept of anesthesia evolves. Anesthesia, a Greek word in which an means without, asthesia means consciousness. Why anesthesia is needed? Before the discovery of anesthetics, many surgeries would be way too traumatic to perform. Patients feel too much of pain, horrendous experience and was uncooperative for the surgery. But to perform a smooth surgery, we need to lose the sensation, consciousness and to relieve pain of the patient. Just think how does we do all these things at once. Now here comes the concept of anesthetics. Anesthetic can perform all this function at once. Before 1846, many people has tried to create anesthesia in patient before surgery. But successful attempt was by William T. J. Morton, a dental surgeon. He used ether as anesthetics for surgery. At MG Hospital on patient Edward Gilbert Abbott. Before this, opioids, mandate fruit, and alcohol are used as anesthetics for surgery. Then nitrous oxide came into play, but the failure rate of this substance was so high. So the modern technique has developed, where a combination of anesthetics are used to achieve the goal. Now coming back to the classification of anesthesia. Anesthesia means loss of sensation or without consciousness. It involves administration of drugs to numb a small part of body. It is classified into four types. Those are local anesthesia, regional anesthesia, sedation and general anesthesia. Now we will talk about local anesthesia. In this type of anesthesia, anesthetics are applied locally to numb or to lose sensation of a small part of the body, which is achieved by blocking the nerve conduction of the particular nerve supplies that area. Next, regional anesthesia. The concept of regional anesthesia is almost same as that of local anesthesia, except it deals with a larger area than that of local anesthesia, which is achieved by the same mechanism. It is further classified into three types, spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia, and nerve block. Now comes to sedation. This involves induction of sleep-like state by using suitable amount of anesthetics. This makes you physically and mentally re relaxed, but not unconscious. Now we will discuss about general anesthesia. It is temporary reversible loss of consciousness and sensation. The other features of the general anesthesia are analgesia and amnesia followed by muscle relaxation and abolition of reflexes. Now we are going to classify the general anesthesia. According to Guidel, general anesthesia can be classified into four stages. Those are stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. Stage 1, which is also known as stage of analgesia. It is the time period between the introduction of an anesthetic agent in the body to the loss of consciousness. In this stage, patient is conscious but drowsy. Stage 2, which is also known as stage of excitement. In this stage, patient is unconscious but the sympathetic activity such as heart rate, blood pressure increases followed by dilation of pupils. There is also chance of vomiting. Stage 3 which is extends from normal breathing to cessation of spontaneous breathing. This stage is further divided into four planes which are plane 1, plane 2, plane 3 and plane 4 respectively. In plane 1 there is cessation of eyeball movement occur. In plane 2, it is up to beginning of intercostal muscle paralysis 
associated with corneal and laryngeal reflex are lost in plane 3 it is up to completion of intercostal muscle paralysis associated with pupil dilated and complete abolition of light reflexes in plane 4 it is up to diaphragmatic paralysis causing apnea or holding of breathing which is also known as stage of surgical anesthesia as patient goes to deeper aspect of unconscious where skeletal muscle relaxation depression of breathing and eye movement stoppage occur actual surgery is performed in this stage stage 4 which is also known as stage of overdose or medullary paralysis patient undergoes this stage when much more anesthetic are given than required which leads to depression of respiratory and vasomotor center resulting in a stoppage of respiration and potential cardiovascular collapse which leads to death within a minute mechanism of anesthesia have you ever wondered how an anesthetic works they temporarily cease the nerve conduction to the brain how they do this they basically suppress the reticular function which maintain consciousness by promoting the activity of inhibitory neurotransmitter and suppressing the activity of excitatory neurotransmitter now come to first phenomena how activity of inhibitory neurotransmitter promoted the main target for achieving this is ligand gated ion channels like GABA A receptor gated chloride channel. Many inhalational anesthetics potentiate the action of GABA to open the chloride channel. Now chloride ion will enter into the neuron which causes hyperpolarization of the neuron that leads to blockage of nerve conduction resulting in anesthesia. Now we will discuss how the excitatory neurotransmitter stop anesthetics like nitrous oxide and ketamine selectively inhibit nmda type of glutamate receptor which get calcium ion in neuron inhibition of this causes blockage of nerve conduction and leads to anesthesia another way by which general anesthetics works is by neuronal hyperpolarization which leads to activation of specific type of potassium channel which causes inhibition of presynaptic neurotransmitter release as well as postsynaptic activation thus they block the nerve conduction which leads to general anesthesia anesthetics basically these are the drugs used to achieve anesthesia or when administered in the body causes anesthesia classification on the basis of route of administration it can be classified into two types inhalational and parenteral inhalational anesthesia it is further divided into two types volatile liquid and gas the example of volatile liquid are halothen isoflurane sevoflurane desflurane and ether Halothen is a potent anesthetic but poor analgesic and it can causes hepatotoxicity, hypothermia, hypotension if uses repeatedly. Isoflurane, sevoflurane and desflurane are non-inflammable and non-explosive but causes hypotension and respiratory depression. Ether, it is inflammable and explosive but it is excellent analgesic causes no hypotoxicity the example of gas is nitrous oxide nitrous oxide is a non irritant and non inflammable anesthetic which has wide margin of safety parenteral anesthetics it is of two types inducing drugs and slow acting drugs the example of inducing drugs are propofol etomidate thiopentone and methohexetone propofol popular rapid acting preferred for surgical procedure causes fall in blood pressure ethomidate iv anesthetics 
used for induction of anesthesia has a rapid onset and short duration of action. The example of slow acting drugs are 1. Benzodiazepine like diazepam and midazolam, 2. Opioids like pentanyl and supentanyl, and 3. Ketamine. Ketamine produces dissociative anesthesia. Adverse effects. Now we know how anesthetics works. Let's dig out something more about it. This time we are going to discuss about various ad adverse effects of the anesthetics. Here comes the easy way to remember this and the mnemonics is bad chance where B stands for bladder problem, bruising and soreness, A for X and back pain, D for dizziness and faint, C for confusion and memory loss, H for headache, N for nausea and vomiting, C for chest pain or chest infection. Contraindication There are some conditions where general anesthetics are contraindicated to use like medical problem, like diabetes, asthma and high blood pressure. Those who are smoking and taking alcohol, they have to stop that before the application of general anesthetics.